Hi there everyone. Today I'm reviewing The Myth of Normal, Trauma, Illness and Healing in a Toxic Culture by Gabor Mate and his son Daniel Mate as co-writer. So in this book, renowned physician and addiction expert Gabor Mate talks about how culture influences the trauma that we have in society today. Ever-growing numbers of people with anxiety, depression, ADHD are suffering from these illnesses and the numbers seem to be increasing. So why has this trend continued? Are today's societal and technological developments influencing such trends? Let's review the book to see what's going on. So Gabor Mate is extremely well qualified to talk on this subject, given he has over four decades of experience helping people with addiction and trauma, and he's penned several books on the topic. Yet, this is still an, an ambitious book, and I was glad to see it weighs in at around 500 pages to do the task adequately. So in terms of the contents of the book, the first chapters review some of the traditional views in a modern context, exploring how the repression of trauma works and can lead to a host of potential mental health problems. The authors review the psychosomatic link of trauma, mind and body, that trauma is not just all in your head, as some of the evidence Marte shares shows us. People with mental health issues are far more likely to suffer from physical diseases. Nor is mental health woefully a physical di disease in of itself, a historical view that is now generally disregarded. Another chapter expands this to the effects of the environment. Mental health problems are not just in your head or your physical self but shaped by the world around a person. Marte still finds time to bring in the impact of childbirth, such as stress on the mother during pregnancy and its influences on the baby's chances of suffering from mental health issues in life. There's also attachment theory and the problems of Western consumerist capitalism on mental health, which is probably the main theme of this book. Later chapters also involve the roles and explore sexism, racism, and even psychedelics. I told you it's ambitious. And as we sort of go into these topics, in talking about this, we're entering a territory where people are quite inclined to disagree with one another. So I'll aim to stay very objective here, but just clearly state how politics is raised in this book. Marte argues that modern Western society is partially responsible for the growth of mental health problems. This is also argued in books such as the journalist um, Johan Hari's Lost Connections. And it's the thrust of this book, as implied by the title, The Myth of Normal. It is the cultural setting that is helping mental health issues grow through a loss of focus on nature and being close to nature an emphasis on personal achievement, money and possessions. Technology has been decreasing our levels of human contact and as displayed during the lockdowns, during Covid, there's been associated increases with mental health issues due to isolation. Marte's views are clearly explained and I do think some readers might get turned off when debating the political nuances of some of these trends. But for the most part, I did find that the blend of personal experience, viewpoints and scientific research was well argued. It's just that often, as soon as politics, religion or controversial subjects come into a book like this, it can turn people off. So it is something to be aware of. It might be quite daunting for somebody not familiar with the literature around addiction, trauma, mental health issues. But suffice to say that they are all interrelated. This book, in exploring these, though, reads well, and that's a key point. Despite the potential for being confronted with many new topics on the part of the reader, astute readers will find it's an engaging journey of how our needs aren't being met from childhood to a cultural tendency to focus on the wrong things to meet those needs. It hardly comes across as surprising when laid out like this that these issues are growing. And I think even for somebody who is moderately familiar with the literature on this subject, the book reads well and goes at a pace. It has a knack for bringing in famous figures, sometimes critically, 
such as Johan Hari, Jordan Peterson, Tony Blair, Greta Thunberg, or, or personal stories and, and anecdotes, anonymous or not, of people who have suffered or have opinions on trauma, addiction and the other issues. The references aren't prolix and they're used when necessary and it does supplement the book well. I think in reviewing a book like this I do have to be careful of bias and it is arguing a view that I do subscribe to. I do believe that modern culture has a problem with creating mental health issues or at least is tuned to not necessarily eradicate them effectively. As Marte mentions, the historic pushing of drugs to temporarily resolve an issue and that temporarily may potentially be a patient's entire life rather than exploring the deeper meaning and causes of these issues is part of the problem. Drugs do have a place, and for certain people that they are the answer. But often, if they're not addressing the underlying root of the illness, then more has to be done. And that might be in combination with a prescribed drug. But really, the issue that this book raises is the cultural influence. Growing up in an environment with constant technology, consumerism, and declining human contact is having widespread nefarious effects that need more recognition from books like this. This book then is a diagnosis. By Marte's own admission, he cannot provide all of the answers. The book actually feels like it starts off many conversations. It touches on many of the themes I've mentioned throughout this review, environment, modern society, personal anecdotes and examples, but also Marte's personal experiences. There is even some brief advice for how to confront trauma, and it is quite brief though, I think it was two chapters, and its viewpoints on certain figures or approaches. It is a personal diagnosis, rather than a completely objective and scientific book, but it is written by a complete expert. This helps to make it readable, but it does mean there are quite a lot of varying chapters here, which readers could find erratic. Personally, being familiar with some of the literature, I did find it read well, but sometimes did wonder if I'd have preferred it to be more objective. However, some of the personal stories about um, the war and Gabriel Marte's upbringing were really engaging. Either way, the book is a review of the current landscape and its associated problems, and in this goal it is mainly successful. So in terms of final score then, to summarise, this is a book that will definitely be eye-opening for some. There's quite a lot to take in here, and this book can't afford to lay out all of the nuances of all of the problems it discusses and brings up. What it does do, though, is produce a call for urgency in addressing a culture that seems to be contributing to mental health problems, and for that it definitely is a worthy read. So I'm giving this one an 8 out of 10, it was a really good read. It covers a lot of complex interrelated issues well, and I think it's readable for most people, but there are those personal experiences which might switch some people off. But anyway, I'm reviewing many more psych psychology and sort of mental health books as well as many other genres. So thanks for watching and please subscribe. Cheers.